we'll start looking at the features of Google Data Studio in order to efficiently like create your dashboard. Uh, some words about me. I was previously a music director for a local radio, and now I've fully embraced uh, the data world, uh, but uh, always like applied uh, to the music business. Uh, I'm currently assembling data. I'm making dashboard for uh, Warner Music Group, uh, making sure that everything looks pretty and especially efficient. So let's go into uh, some of the basic principles uh, of information design. There's like, like a very important question that we need to ask ourselves when working with data. So actually, who needs uh, to visualize data? The answer may not surprise you, but they're actually humans. In fact, uh, uh, machines, uh, they don't need to look at a bar chart to tell you what is the biggest number and how does it relate to others. So. Um, it's very fundamental to understand this because you need to uh, think about some of the characteristics that us as humans have. Uh, because at the end, they are the end users of your visualization and they have, and those are, they have these specific characteristics. First and foremost, humans are visual animals. We like stories and uh, a well-written story and well-constructed story. And most importantly, we humans like beautiful things. And this visual aspect uh, is uh, really fundamental because uh, it's a great part of how do we perceive the world. In fact, like 30 to 50% of the human brain is actually devoted to image processing. And that's why uh, images actually work better than text. So when you're building your uh, data visualization, your charts, uh, think about uh, what is pleasant for you, what is enticing for you, because uh, it would be relate also to basically all of your audience. Now let's take a look at some of the most important charts uh, and how you can uh, assemble some very effective uh, color palettes. Um, first and foremost, let's go with the queen of the charts, the bar chart. This is probably the most used and the most efficient one. It's uh, extremely effective because uh, as humans, we have a, like a natural capacity of parsing the difference between those different re rectangles. So we can immediately tell which uh, uh, the data, how, what's the biggest value in this uh, at the simple glance. So bar chart is always like a safe choice and a very, um, a solid one. Then uh, when you need like to look uh, at uh, change over time, and especially like with dates to see like the behavior of a track across like a time period, the line chart uh, is very helpful uh, and uh, probably your best uh, uh, chart to use in this case. Another very interesting one, it's the scatter plot or bubble chart. This is particularly great when you want to show correlation when using two or more variables. So you can understand how the different elements in your chart basically relates to each other. If like there's like a specific relationship, something that you can achieve by just looking at this chart. Then we'll go to the infamous pie chart. That's this one is particularly controversial because uh, um, it can be powerful, but uh, only when uh, you use few categories and very clean values. As you can see, the pie chart on the left has only three categories and uh, the values are pretty clear and we can immediately rank uh, which uh, uh, of the two categories is like the first, the second, and the third. The one on the right is quite a mess, especially because we have a lot of colors and uh, it's particularly difficult for us to tell uh, uh, the values of these specific slices. So it's very difficult to do a ranking in this case. So pie chart, uh, think if you really need it, uh, because uh, uh, only in the event that you have uh, very few categories, it can be a valuable option. Uh, let's go now to talk about colors and color palettes. 
color palettes are basically a combination of colors that you pick and you keep consistent across your presentation or your dashboard. Uh, this is a classic example, a four color palette. Uh, you can go really crazy with the color combination that you want, but there's like some uh, important things uh, and things that you need like to really think about it. First of all, uh, try to avoid oversaturation as much as possible. Uh, because think about like assessing the visual flavor uh, of your dashboard, of your presentation. Uh, this allows you like to reduce uh, and limit the choices of colors that you're gonna use. Pick for maximum five colors for your presentation. Otherwise you're gonna like uh, create oversaturation and be very tiresome for your uh, for audience to look at your project. Then you want to balance colors, those very bright ones with neutral colors. Neutral col colors are white, black, grays, and some shades of brown. Uh, they have a very specific function of uh, like allowing, allowing the eye to rest and giving rhythm to your presentation. So in, in order for your very bright colors to really stand out. Also, it's very important like to uh, keep a strong contrast. And uh, a good rule is that uh, if you try your presentation on a grayscale, um, it will definitely work uh, also in color. So uh, choose not only different shades, uh, but also different intensity of, of colors in order like to each have uh, for each of them to have a precise identity. Then uh, it's always like important to aim for balance. There's like a lot of theory regarding color and how to set up the correct ratio of colors. I'm gonna give you like a very quick one, the 60, 30, 10 rule. This is a very uh, good ratio of uh, how to um, pick up the colors for your presentation. Basically, you're gonna use your primary color 60% of the time is light blue, for example. You're gonna balance it out with some grays, your neutral colors for about 30%. And then you're gonna put your accents as only the 10%. So those really bright and mm, very, very bright colors that allows you like to set up a point. Now let's go and try to define what a dashboard is and how can I, can I create a compelling data visualization. There are three fundamental questions that you need to ask yourself. First of all, know what you really want to say. Why do you want to say it? What information do I want to give? Define the scope of your research or your presentation because if it's not clear to you what you are gonna say, it will be not clear for your audience. So ask all your questions that you need regarding how, what's the best approach to the thesis that you're working on. Next, it's time to take a look at your data and what your data is saying. So really take your time to really understand your data and check out what elements do you have and try to understand if uh, they're sufficient for your analysis or you need like to retrieve additional data sets to further convey your point. Then very important, know what your audience wants to hear and change the language that you use based on the audience. Are you talking to the uh, a general public or some very experienced uh, music industry leaders? That changes a lot because you can be like more generic from a side and maybe you want to go more technical since these people know what you're talking about. And always like provide further context uh, if, uh, um, if your thesis is like not uh, very clear and um, in like to really make your others understand what you're talking about. Then it's time to finally start to sketch your dashboard. You can start looking at the charts that you are available and uh, with uh, keeping always in mind what your end goal is. Um, so you can start to summarize your key points and think what charts would be more useful in order like to really convey those points that you're defining. 
Then uh, another important thing is start to sketch your dashboard on paper. Um, this is very important step because it allows you like to check if uh, the data at your disposal matches your story by doing like this very quick draft. So you can redefine your story or your topics according to the data that you are available that you started like to sketch. Then you can finally move on Data Studio or whatever tool do you want to use. And this, in this part, you can also like try to review the points that you have and see that the charts that you've uh, included actually match your end goal. And uh, if you find out that our chart that you're putting in isn't useful uh, or too complex for what you want to, to show, go and just remove it. So now we can move to uh, our actual tutorial regarding Google Data Studio. It's a very useful tool. Let me find, find my table here. Here it is. <laughs> okay, you can ju just simply Google um, Google Data Studio. And you access uh, the uh, main uh, part of, the, of Data Studio. As you can see, it's pretty similar to other products of the Google uh, Suite. And we can start uh, creating our new visualization. You can either do by the Create button or creating a blank report. So we click here. And as you can see, the first thing that Google Data Studio asks us is to import the data. Um, the simplest way to do it it's by uploading a file. In fact, you can connect a CSV file in order for the program to read it. Or you can create a Google Data Sheet with all uh, your entire data set. Uh, we're going to use this method for the data ingestion. And as, as you can see, I have uh, this data set for measure of music that I created. Once you selected your Google Sheet, you can click Add. And while uh, the program loads it, uh, we can start and take a look at what the data data set is. Uh, so it's a pretty simple uh, streaming report regarding some uh, tracks uh, of a fictional label. Uh, we have uh, a specific date, the catalog number of uh, that specific track, and the artist that realized it. The format is streaming for everything, all the records that we have. We have the different service providers, as well as country, territories, and the aggregated streams per month of this specific record. So it's a pretty um, simple set, that, but we can uh, actually achieve a lot from it. Let's go back to our file, and as you can see, uh, Google Data Studio already imported a table for me and created that table based on the catalog number and the record count of all my data sets. Um, in this case, uh, this could be a good start to see. Maybe we want to see which is the best, uh, um, the most streamed record of our label. So we can start uh, creating a different table with this. Uh, instead of record count, I want to add another measure. In this case, it's my stream that I see here. So as you can see, the, av the available fields are basically all the columns that we see here on our data sets. So this is basically all that's available to us. And the beauty of Google Data Studio is that you can simply drag your uh, um, you can simply drag your measure on top of it. So now we want to add the streams as a metric for this table. I'm gonna remove record count. And now, as you can see, we have a table of all my uh, different records, all my different. Uh, um, tracks with their total number of streams. 
Amazing. So uh, this is a good start. Let's think of what other elements we can add as well. So a thing that I like to add on a dashboard is like some kind of summary data. Like for example, this is a project like for this uh, record label and we want to add like a sort of summary data. So the total amount of streams that our entire catalog had massed so far. So in order to add this type of data, we go here and we add a chart. In this case, I want to see just like the total number of streams and we can use this scorecard here. I can drop it like here. And as you can see, Google Data Studio is pretty smart and already like compiled that for me. So we have the sum of the total streams. So we have a whopping 8 billion streams, pretty good amount. Uh, probably we're not interested to see this entire figure. So we can uh, maybe trim it down to just show like uh, um, 8 billions. In order to do so, you can go directly here on the style section. So data, you're gonna basically modify um, what is uh, inside your chart. So in this case, uh, uh, the data range or uh, the specific metrics therein, while the style, it's uh, literally how you're gonna present it. And as you can see here, we have a pretty uh, checkbox that show us compact numbers. And with a single touch, you see that we have uh, rounded down uh, our streams to 8.0 uh, total billion. Another interesting thing that I would like to see is how many records do, do we actually have that amassed this very um, um, interesting amount of streams. So we're going to add another chart. We're going to add another scorecard. We're going to put it next to it. And instead of record count, we're going to put catalog number. So in this case, we're going to count the distinct number of catalog numbers that are available to us. And we have a total of 103 uh, records in total. So as you can see, this is really pretty simple. You just like click, drag, and drop the elements that you want to show directly on the metric field. Uh, this is nice. Now I want to maybe focus on the artists. Since uh, as uh, I uh, saw on uh, our data set, we have different artists. So we want to see how they actually performed. So let's try with the infamous pie chart that we were talking about previously and see how does it work. In this case, I don't want to see catalog number as my dimension, but my artist. As you see here, we have, they added basically everything, uh, all the records that we have. So we're gonna click the artist and drop it under metrics. And given a bit of time, we're gonna see how does it actually look like our ranking. Uh, no, we need actually to do, sorry, put it under the metric. And we want it by dimension stream. So uh, as a review, dimension basically tells you how do you want to rank and how do you want to count uh, uh, the, different, uh, the different metrics? So while this one is adjusting, we can start thinking of other things that we can add as well. So now that uh, from the data set, we saw that uh, we have a lot of countries and also territories. So 
that would be interesting to see how do we want to actually um, what's our best performing countries in terms of streams, for example. Uh, let's, uh, this one, it's still, so let's go back uh, to the basics uh, and put it uh, back again for the artist. So dimension, I want to see artist based on the, the streams. All right, that now does look considerably good. So as you can see, this type of chart, pie chart, it's pretty understandable because we have some really clear distinctions between the measures. Uh, we can immediately tell that artist B, it's our best seller without even like looking at the percentage. However, let's take a look at how would it look like with a bar chart? Because in my opinion, we, uh, the bar chart has the advantage of uh, already ranking uh, our artist. So in order to change uh, the style of your chart uh, on Google Data Studio, you just go under the chart here, you click it, and it shows uh, all the different type of charts that you can create with the same measures. So let's go with a bar chart and see how does it look like. And as you can see, it looks considerably better because uh, as I said before, this type of chart ranks uh, my different artists. So I can immediately tell, and especially I can understand that how much bigger artist B was compared to the other three. We can really see uh, the difference between uh, the number of streams uh, between uh, these artists. Another thing that's uh, interesting to add to this specific chart is not only the number of streams that these artists uh, uh, amassed, but also uh, how many uh, records, how many tracks they actually released. And we can do this by using the, the optional metrics function that you see here. So we just click it and we want to add, in this case, the catalog number to see how many records did they actually release. And the beauty of it is that you can switch be between these different views with just a click of a button. Uh, on your chart, you go on optional metrics and you can show not only the, the visualization based on streams, but also by the number of records that these artists, uh, artists released. Let's give it a little bit of time to do some calculations. All right, so as you can see, we have 38 number of records for artist B. So even like if artist B and Z are pretty similar um, number of records, we can see that by the streams, uh, Arti artist B performed considerably better than artist Z. So that's very interesting to see. Uh, let's continue on our analysis on the artist. And since uh, based on the data set, we have a lot of dates, uh, we can see how do they behave with a specific line chart to see the evolution of the streams for these artists. In order to do so, we're going to add a new chart and we're going to add our line chart here. As you can see, I'm not concerned about uh, uh, it looking good yet because I want like to uh, like create uh, my dashboard first. Uh, all right, so now we want uh, to see, as you see here on the uh, X axis, we have uh, the number, the, the individual artist, uh, and we actually want to see the, uh, the dates here. So in order to do so, under our dimension here, where we can see its artist, we want to switch it with date. So we can just like click and drag it. 
and giving a little bit of time to do its calculations. We're gonna see how the, um, the streaming evolution of our total number of, uh, of tracks. Uh, as you can see, something is weird here because we, the, our chart starts from uh, backwards from November 2021 to January 2017. But we can simply solve it by using this sort function that you can see here. So instead of descending, we put it as ascending. And now it should look right. Yes. But uh, as mentioned, now we see uh, the total number. So these 8.0 billion streams that we have in total. And we wanted to break it down based on artists to see how they actually performed. And in order to do so, we will use this breakdown dimension field. So we pick our artist name, we put it under breakdown. And it's gonna, yes, and it's gonna show how each uh, artist uh, uh, performed across time to see um, really how artists be at like a, this very sudden curve, uh, way different compared to the other three artists. Okay, that's nice. We want to add another table, another chart here because we have some room and we told, we said that we have a lot of countries available. So let's add a map. And uh, as again, we had uh, a chart here. We want to go with a field map, but you can choose whatever different visualization you want to see. And luckily, Google Data Studio is pretty smart because I already like uh, created my country field with our streams. And yes, we can see, we can clearly see here how the US market accounts for the majority of my streams. Okay, now everything, it's uh, interesting for us. Maybe we can add a little bit of personalization to this table here by maybe putting it as a, table with a heat map. So as again, to know they like to change the appearance of your chart, you click on it, you go on charts and you switch it to a heat map. Now your dashboard is dynamic. So this is meant to like uh, tell you a story and also like allow not only you, but also your audience to explore it. So we can use some specific filter to trim down our views uh, in order like to see, um, to get a better understanding, some more interesting insights. For example, here we can see that very few happened before 2019 in terms of streams. And then there was like a sudden spike here. So maybe we want to trim it down this uh, chart based on a specific time, uh, time period. And in order to do so, we can add a filter by adding a control here and putting date range control. We're gonna put it here for the moment. And as you can see, we can now select a date range and maybe we want to go to 2019 till January 2020, you can click apply. And as you will see, does it, it didn't apply it. So let's go back again and put January uh, and then to put like a specific date. Then we go to January 2021st, the first, and we click apply. You're gonna see that every view in our dashboard is gonna change based on the time period that we set. So this way we're able like to filter it and see if there was like any substantial changes. And as you see, we have uh, our total number of streams changed, our total number of records changed, and my line chart as well. 
was trimmed down to only this time period. So this is also like extremely useful to add. Uh, let's add another filter, this time based on territory. So we want to see maybe if there's like some significant difference on my different markets. So let's add another control. In this case, I want to add a drop down list. I'm gonna put it here. And instead of catalog number, I'm not interested in going that much into detail. I'm gonna put as a control field, our territory. So still click, drag and drop. And giving it a moment, as you can see, now we can filter based on the territories that are available to us. So let's say that I want to see the streaming on Latin America. So I'm gonna apply the filter and my entire visualization will change. And we'll see how Brazil and Mexico are some of the best performing countries in that specific uh, geographical area. So now we have uh, basically everything that we need for this specific dashboard. Now let's go to put some uh, spice into it and uh, edit uh, and make it more uh, interesting to see. In order to do so, you just like right click anywhere in order to go to the team and layout section. Here you have uh, already some default, default teams that you can choose from. As you can see, it already changed the font and how they display the visualization. So you can start from that, or you can either like completely customize your presentation by choosing a different background, choosing your font. So in this section, you can go really crazy and personalize your dashboard. Uh, we can maybe start with uh, this particular template that's uh, gonna be interesting for us. I don't like a lot this background color, so I'm gonna customize it and change it to a uh, light gray. Uh, maybe I also want to add a banner on top to further distinguish my, uh, my, uh, my summary data here. So here I'm gonna create a shape. And as you can see, I can quickly create a banner. Let's uh, change it uh, to a dark gray. And now we don't see anything that's beneath it, but we can solve it by right-clicking on it, bring it back. Maybe we can add uh, a image for measure of music. So you can upload it from your computer. Let's go to the measure of music presentation with the logo. We can add it here and make it transparent. As you can see here, uh, other things that we can change. Uh, basically now you can really personalize your dashboard, whatever you like. So here on style, for example, we can go and uh, maybe change the background of it. Maybe make it transparent to blend it better. Same here. On the style, we can go back here on background. So there's a lot of room for personalization, as you can see. Uh, just remember like to keep things balanced and uh, uh, adjust your elements based on, um, on the style of presentation that you want to create. Um, here, for example, you can also like uh, decide what's the best layout for you Be because you can go with like a, a different canvas size. Mm, you can choose like between uh, doing different uh, uh, formats, different ratios. 
but you can also like go very creative and uh, create, I don't know, maybe a vertical presentation and really like deliver your story in this way. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can cover. I'm gonna show you where, I think we're gonna running a little bit of, uh, later. So I'm gonna show you how I finished my presentation for this one. And this is how your presentation on Google Data Studio would look like at the end. And you can quickly browse through it. Uh, I think uh, it's all for me now. We have some time for uh, questions, I believe. That was incredible, Tommaso. What a cool dashboard. I think one of the first questions that came up immediately was, can you share this presentation? So hopefully- Absolutely. Absolutely, great. So I will get you guys information on to how to access this presentation as soon as I have it. So look out for more information about that shortly. And hopefully you'll share these dashboards as well so people can play around with them. Absolutely. Fantastic, great. Um, great. Another question came in from Bobby. Is there a guide on data with all content? Oh gosh, we're talking so quickly. Um, is there a guide on who to on who to analyze music data from all content units? Um, we you're going to see quite a few more um, data options, Bobby, very shortly. So we'll talk through some data you can use to visualize visualize very soon. Um, next question for Tommaso. Uh, what do you use at your job? Um, why would you choose this over Tableau, for example? Well, Google Data Studio is free, so it's accessible to everyone and you can just like log in and start toying around. Tableau, you have a, like a 14-day trial. So if you prefer to use it for the presentation and you have like a, a free account to use, you can go and present on Tableau if you're more confident. Um, next question coming from Eli. How big of data sets is this and how does Data Studio handle large data sets? So B, uh, I think the same limits of Excel apply. So I think Excel can handle well uh, half a million uh, rows, uh, something like this. Uh, it's best like if you try like to compress some data and especially if you have like transactional data. So each row, it's a different entry for streams, for example, try to um, aggregate them. So maybe do a summary based uh, on, uh, in order like to reduce the number of rows. Usually the less rows that you have, uh, the best uh, the, the problem will perform. Yes, that makes sense. So yeah, Excel and Google Data Studio max out, um, Excel maxes out about a million rows and Data Studio will not function quite as well around once you start exceeding that basically. Yeah. Um, so that also I think answers the question about what one of the downsides of Data Studio is it doesn't handle large data sets well, basically. Yeah. Um, great. I think we have time for maybe one more question. Um, how familiar are you with um, Power BI? Have you ever used it before? And do you have any, um, do you have any advantages or no advantages using of that? Uh, I've toyed that around a little bit for it. I'm more of a Tableau guy. I would say that uh, once you learn how to set up a dashboard and your charts, uh, the tools that you're, you're gonna use uh, doesn't matter because the important that it's very clear what you want to create and realize. Then it's just like a matter of like, uh, a couple of weeks of uh, turning it around uh, and so you can learn a new tool. Amazing. All right. Um, actually, we'll get one more in here that I think is a quite interesting one for people that are a little bit more technical. Um, would you rather use a tool like Google Data Studio, Tableau, or a vis uh, visualization library like um, in Python, like Seaborn, Plotly, things like that? It really depends on what you want to create and achieve probably like a, more of a demonstrational project. Uh, Google Data Studio has the advantage of that you can share it with anyone. So even like if you're creating like your own portfolio, it's interesting like to uh, share it maybe with uh, some uh, mentors or like future employees uh, what you created. Tableau has the advantage of being like a software version. Uh, it's more powerful. Uh, you have a lot of other functions. Uh, so it really depends on what you are creating, what's your, the scope, your scope basically. 
Thank you so much. And to our participants, Tommaso is going to be a mentor this weekend as well. So you'll be able to chat much more with him within the Slack channel. And with that, I'm gonna give, um, I'm gonna, we're gonna transition to our next speaker. Give us one minute. And to those that are watching in Hey Summit, this is just a reminder that you have to change between your talks. So there is a new talk happening for this next session. So one second, we'll give you a chance to switch over there. And thank you again, Tommaso, for your time. Thank you, Christine.